Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. We are entering potentially my favorite time of the year to fish. I love the fall months. There are so many positives about it from very little fishing pressure because so many people are in the woods hunting. A lot of people are staying at home watching football. The lakes are free of pleasure boaters. It's a very serene time to get out and fish. You have the leaves starting to change colors. And most importantly, the bass are biting. It does not matter what species you're chasing, largemouth, smallmouth, spotted bass, they're going to be grouped up, they're going to be actively feeding as the water temperatures start to fall and the fish start thinking about their wintering locations, and they're going to weigh more than they've weighed for the most part of the year because they've got full bellies of food, and therefore there is potential to catch a true giant. One of my favorite things to do is chase trophy-sized smallmouth bass where you know I'm looking for true trophy class fish, seven pound class fish or bigger. One of my goals is to catch a state record smallmouth bass for the state of Wisconsin, which would be a little over nine pounds. And I've got a bunch of different ways to go about doing this, but one of my favorite baits and one of the baits that I think uh, gets all overlooked in a lot of different scenarios is a spy bait. You know, a spy bait guys is basically a straight minnow with a couple of little props on the back that is meant to slow roll through the water. It has a little bit of a shimmy to it and it generates a lot of strikes because it's such a slow moving, uh, non-invasive bait for these fish. So what I want to do today is talk about spy baiting, talk about the different approaches I like to use, some of the color patterns that I like to use. And we'll get into that here real quick. I do want to remind you guys that if you want to support the channel, please use my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. It's a great way to show support for the channel. Also, if you're looking for additional content from me, <clears throat> make sure you check out my members only stuff. I do several additional videos a month, as well as a monthly live stream uh, where we have specific topics that we break down in a much longer session. So if you're looking for more content and another way to support the channel, please check out the members only uh, information. <clears throat> All right, so spy baits, guys. Let's talk about spy baits. Spy baits are a very small profile bait that are not meant to create a lot of motion. You know, you look at this bait and you say, what am I supposed to do with it? Am I supposed to jerk it? Am I supposed to twitch it? And the reality is you kind of just let it fall and slow roll it, let the blades do a little bit of spinning action. And the fish will come and eat this bait. It's not unusual for them to come out of 20 feet of water to hit this bait only a few feet down. The key to it, though, is you want to keep this bait in the strike zone as long as possible. And I've got a couple of baits that I love to throw when it comes to spy baits. So the Duo Realis, the Duo Realis one is one of my favorites. Uh, they have a bunch of different sizes. You can see here, this is, uh, this is the smaller one. What size is this? Not the 100. Yeah, the this is the 100. And then this is the, I'm sorry, this is the 100. This is the 80. You can see a difference in size profile. Most people generally prefer to go with the smaller size spy baits. Now for me, I really like to go with the larger ones, specifically in the fall period, because you're talking about the fish looking to feed on larger meals. And a lot of your bait fish throughout the year are a little bit bigger in size. So, you know, from a, a perch standpoint, this is the perfect size perch uh, forage species that the bass are going to want to eat on. This is roughly a four inch bait. I'll measure it specifically. It's right at four inches long. So you would look at this and say, this is bigger than most spy baits. The reality here is one of the reasons I love it is because it is heavier. What is this way? Five eighths ounce. And because it's heavier, I can rifle this thing out on bait casting gear. Generally speaking, if I'm throwing the smaller spy baits, like the 80 size, I'm going to be using it on spinning gear. But I like the heavier spy bait, this 5 8 ounce, the 100 size, because it's a bigger profile and I can throw it further out, which means I make longer casts, I can get the bait deeper down to where the fish are at, and it matches the forage much better. So for me... I love a couple of colors. I love this perch color, and then they've got anything that is more of their chrome colored. Uh, for me, I'm looking for something that matches a herring or an alewife or a cisco. So you're looking at more of your chrome colored baits. Uh, but that's something, those are the two colors that I prefer to go with for 
a larger spy bait like this. Now, having said that, if I'm throwing the smaller size, which I love to do on top of some of the shallower flats, I like to go with crazy colors. You know, this is a special run uh, Duo Realis for Tackle Warehouse. I'm not even sure if you can still buy it. I bought that a while ago. This is, I think, called Lime Ice. This is the Berkeley one. Yeah, Lime Ice. This is one of my favorites. Hopefully you can see the silver flake in there. This is one of my absolute favorites when it comes to uh, fishing for smallmouth and spotted bass. It seems to really excel well. Now I wanna point out a couple of things. So the two that I like are the Duo Realis and the Berkeley. The Berkeley Spy is a phenomenal bait. And the biggest difference between the two is the Berkeley works better on the shimmy. It has much better side to side wiggle on the fall. So when I'm fishing a little deeper, I like to go with the Berkeley Spy because a lot of my strikes will come as it's falling. So I'll cast this out, let it fall to the bottom. On an, uh, I'll keep my line tight so it shimmies down to the bottom and that's when my strikes are coming. And I find that I can keep this bait running deeper than the Duo Realis. Now when I'm fishing just the shallow flats, like in the fall time you get on a lot of flats where you've got large mouth and small mouth that are up in say, I'm gonna say four to eight to 10 foot of water. I find that just the regular Duo Realis uh, works every bit as good just on those flats because I'm straight retrieving. I'm not necessarily letting my bait fall as much. Now it also has a nice wiggle. So for me, that's the key. When I'm talking about spy baits, I want good shimmy out of my baits on the fall. I think the Berkeley has the best, but I also like the fact that the props are a little bit smaller on the Duo Realis, and it seems to be a little bit more of a finesse presentation, and therefore I like this for just straight retrieving on the flats. And then I'll go up to the bigger size when I'm fishing a little bit deeper for the fish that are maybe down on some, say, 20-foot humps where they've got some Cisco or Alewife schooled up, or I've got a deep school of perch, and I need to get my spy bait deeper. So I'll run this down. Now there's a, a couple of things, uh, negatives that come with a spy bait. The biggest is I feel like you lose a lot of fish. A lot of times the fish hit it so hard they don't get stuck real good. And you can combat that by using the right rod and reel. From a rod standpoint, I really would encourage you to go with a longer spinning rod of a medium light, uh, much uh, slower speed. So what I throw is it's a custom build. SJ9000 uh, mud hole MHX blank. So it's a seven and a half foot rod. It's a technically a zero power. So it's got very little backbone, but it's got great parabolic bend. So what that does is it allows me to make really long casts. And when a fish bites it, the rod tip just absorbs that, that fish biting the bait. And if you use spy baits, you know that the hooks that come on these things are laser sharp. So you don't have to worry about setting the hook. You just have to apply pressure. The other key to a rod like that SJ9000 is it's got such a soft tip that when you're fighting the fish and they come up and jump or do a big head shake, the rod tip just absorbs it and they can't get the leverage to throw the baits. So I really would recommend not throwing your spy baits on a very fast action tip. You want a moderate to a slow, fast action. To me, that's really what you're, what you're after. The other thing I want to point out here is colors. So like I said, I like to go with the perch. I like to go with the natural chrome type colors that would match a Cisco or an Alewife or a Herring. Or I like to go with really crazy colors. Generally speaking, if I'm fishing deeper, that's when I'll go with the natural colors. I don't feel like a crazy color generates the strikes as much because the fish are not necessarily as actively feeding as the fish that are up on the flats. When I'm up on the flats, that's when I like to throw my crazier colors, my brights, my uh, chartreuses, my pinks. I like to throw baits that have a lot of various colors in them because it kind of gives the, the bait a much different look in the water. So if I'm fishing flats, I'm throwing odd, you know, crazy bright colors. And if I'm fishing deeper, I'm fishing more natural colors. So guys, the, from a line, a line standpoint, I like to go light. I throw a 10 pound uh, Berkeley X9 braided line, main line to usually a 15 to 20 foot, six pound test uh, Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader. Now I will say if I'm throwing the bigger size, 
the the hundred size at that point i'm going to be throwing it on bait casting gear and i'll have it on straight 10 pound fluorocarbon i don't necessarily want the braided line because that adds sensitivity and most of the rods that i'm throwing do not have the same uh, moderate speed action so i'm trying to dull down my rod a little bit by going with straight fluorocarbon versus a braid to fluorocarbon leader but i'll tell you what right now this time of year your hot spots are either going to be on flats where you've got rock transitions, you've got isolated green weed clumps, if you've got isolated boulders, those are going to be your main spots in, say, 10 foot of water or less. Otherwise, if you're fishing deeper, you're talking about your sharp break lines, your points, if you've got brush piles, uh, your deep humps that may have isolated rocks or rock transitions, those are going to be your, uh, your top priority places to hit this time of year with a spy bait. And I'll tell you what, there are lots of times out where you cannot generate a strike on, say, a swim bait or some other minnow imitating bait. And you put a spy bait on and it just is unreal. The fish will come out of nowhere to hit the bait. I've seen this so many times on the Great Lakes where I have like a shipwreck and I'll go see the fish swimming around. I cannot get them to commit to anything. I throw the spy bait over and three casts in a row, I'll get a fish to come firing out of the shipwreck. So it's just one of those things where you got to keep in mind, it gives the fish a little bit different presentation and it has a feature to it that agitates those fish into biting and the fall time is a great time to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Get out, try some spy baits. Don't be afraid to go crazy colors because the bass this time of year like those crazy colors. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, we'll have another video coming up tomorrow.